Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Nightmare Cabin. I've got a, uh, a sh not really an unboxing, a show off and a review to do for you. Um, we're going to be talking about the new reissues from Fear Factory, uh, reindustrialized and mechanized. Now, reindustrialized is kind of a revamped director's cut, shall we say, of the industrialist. And um, also, he's a, an expanded edition of Mechanize. Um, Reindustrialize is the main event, really. I've just got the um, my original copies out as well, just having a look. And um, I don't think I really needed to buy Mechanize again, to be honest with you. But um, they were both available, and I just thought, oh, I'll win for a penny, in for a pound. I'm going to do a video anyway. So, yeah, I'll... Um, get into it and i'll also i've i just realized i've not really spoke about fear factor on the channel before so i'll give you my um my take on what i've seen on the new lineup and what i think of the current state of fear factory and what i think's well what i'm hoping for or what i think's going to happen going forward so let's uh get into it so reindustrialize is the main one so we'll quickly touch on mechanized first um this was uh, the reunion album of such. There's been a bit... Obviously, Fear Factory have got a bit of a... A bit of a eventful timeline when it comes to lineup changes. So, this was the reunion where Bert and C. Bell, the main vocalist... Well, the only... Well, only vocalist up until a point. The two main guys, Bert and C. Bell, if you're uninitiated. And uh, Dino... I can never pronounce his name. I don't think I've ever actually said it out loud. Dino. I only ever said... I want to get this right though, so let's quickly. Cazares, is that right, Dino Cazares? That's the first time I've ever said that out loud. Um, yeah, so Bert Burton and Dino had a t always been the main two um, up until a point, and um, they split up. Burton carried on with um, the bass player Christian taking over on guitar. He like yeah moved up to guitar, drummer stayed the same, and they got Strapping Young Lads bass player in. They did two albums. Um, what you know, it's a bit of an over obviously an overlooked period of the band, but I think um, the first album Archetype was a incredibly underrated album. In fact, no, I think that's still regarded as um, one of the better albums uh, by fans. Um, and then yeah we. They did Transgression. And then, yeah, Dino and Burton made it up. Now, I can't quite remember. I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to um, look it up. I can't remember if the band split up and then Burton and Dino came, like, came back together. Or if Dino came and then Christian and uh, Raymond got booted out. I'm not quite sure how it works because I know Christian and Raymond, the original drummer... Um, I think they sued the band over the band over the name, something like that. There was some sort of um, I think they I don't think they wanted to take over the name and carry on the the band. I think they just wanted wanted a payoff basically. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah. So Burton and Dino are back together on this album. The bass player from Strapping Young Lad is still on bass. And then Gene Hoagland is on drums. And, um, yeah, I think this is a classic Fear Factory album. I think it's just as good as their classic material. I think it stands up. Um, I've re-listened to both of these albums today. And, yeah, I, there's songs on this I actually forgot because I haven't listened to it for a while. And, yeah, this this stands up really well. Um, songs like Fear Campaign, Power Shifter, um, all of them are good, really. Uh, Control Demolition is fantastic. Big, you know, it's exactly what I want. It's the perfect formula of what Fear Factory were. Great, you know, precision, shredding riffs, big epic choruses, good use of keyboards when needed. And um, yeah, Final Exit, the closing track, I think is just superb and what we get then with this new edition is three re-recorded songs so you've got Marta, Crash Test and Sengre De Ninos um, 
right, all three of these songs were originally on the band's first album, but the first album is actually concrete, but they scrapped that original recording and then went on to re-record the first album, which was to be Soul of a New Machine. So Marta and Crash Test were re-recorded on Soul of a New Machine, um, while Sengred Deninos, Deninos was on Concrete. Concrete got reissued later on after Digimortal. I think that was when the split was going on, the original split. So you got like the original version of the first album. So three original songs from the first album two of them on both versions one of them on one version three original songs re-recorded that we got there in the end didn't we and uh yeah it's worth having um if you're mad like me you don't necessarily have to buy it again but if you don't have the album obviously pick this one up and you're going to get it nice and cheap because it's brand new um artwork and the i just uh, the booklets are exactly the same so literally just buy this if you want the bonus tracks. Or if you've not got the album, get this one. Because you do you get bonus tracks. But yeah, I think Mechanizer stands up really well. And um, yeah, I might as well keep this new version. And I might as well just sell this on Discogs. It's for it's nice and cheap. No point in having two copies. Um, I'm not going to throw away this one though. Um, so yeah, you've got the Industrialist. So here we are. The original team are back together. We've got a awesome rhythm section as well i forget the guy's name do forgive me byron i think his name was uh let's have a quick look because i don't like leaving people out um bear with me two seconds he was in strapping young lad i know that much yeah byron stroud and gene hoglan on drums i mean <laughs> the gene hoglan drumming on an album is worth the admission price alone isn't it so um yeah mechanized stands up really well this is the controversial album so next up they followed it up with the industrialist and on this album it was just burton and dino uh dino doing all the music um he's doing yeah basically the bass and the guitars i think the um keyboards were done between them as well and uh yeah controversial album this album had a drum machine um up to that point, um, Raymond, the original, uh, I forget his surname, let's quickly look it up. He was a fantastic drummer as well, so he des definitely deserves a mention. And he was on like the first four albums, five albums, no, six albums, bloody hell. Uh, la, 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 what's his name? Raymond Herrera. Is he even... He's not um, related to Danny, is he? From Napalm Death can't be but anyway yeah so fantastic drummer and then gene hoagland so there probably wasn't a drummer alive that could match them two but yeah they did this album with a drum machine it was controversial at the time i remember being a bit down on this album at the time um i don't know why really because first off it's not as if the band lied about it for a start they were honest they just said yeah we we, we got a drum machine on this one and there's an industrial you know element to the band's sound as well as a dystopian cyborg man meets machine theme to the lyrics so the technology taking over kind of played in with the mythos of the band really and they had really triggered kind of really well processed drums anyway and if they'd never said anything, I don't think anyone would have known any different. But anyway, this album took a bit of a bashing because of that at the time. And the band got a bit of flack for it. I was a bit down on the album as well. And um, I reassessed the album a few years later. And I'm going, do you know what? This isn't actually a bad album. I don't know why I was so pissed off that there's a drum machine on it. The songs are still good. And um, yeah, maybe I should have shouldn't have uh, been so down on the album but now reassessing the album with this new release i re-listened to the album again today and this album stands up really well there's really good songs on it i mean recharge and new messiah and god eater that's a free song winning streak straight away um right there's so this has been remixed and it's now got a drummer on it mike heller has done the drums um is he the band's current 
drummer let's quickly look him up um No, he's not the current drummer, but uh, let's look him up. Uh, Mike Heller. Oh, so he was in Fear Factory for a while. Um, what did he do? What did he do? Oh, he was on... Oh, he's been on the last two albums. So, yeah, he... Oh, he was in World Under Blood. Successful right, successful right Apocalypse Across the Sky. Disembowel. What was he in now? Oh, as a uh, Imot, the... Um, Mike from Monstrosity's other bands. They're really cool. Kind of proggy. Oh, this guy's done quite a lot. Malignancy. Raven. Um, yeah. Wretched, Wretched Pain. Yeah, the guy's... Yeah, the guy's definitely done the rounds. Uh, yeah, so he has... He has now recorded the drums for it. So we now got the same album. Now with live drums. And been remixed. And um, you've got an extra song on here called Enhanced Reality. Now, apparently this was written during this session but wasn't finished. And it was as a bonus track on, is it Genesis, the next album? Um, but now they've put it... Genexus, that's it. Oh, it's Genesis. Um, so it was a bonus track on that album. But now it's been put where it belongs in the sequence of this album. Plus, you've got um, two remixes, which I'm not really... I don't really care for remixes. Um, Fear Factory do like a remix, though. And there's a couple of... Excuse me. Because you've got Demanufacture, and then you've got Remanufacture. Oh, they've put out a couple of albums now where it's just remixes. And remixes are always in their... In their... Um, bonus tracks as well. Plus, I had a quick listen, but I'm just not... I don't really care for them. Um, and then you've got... Um, Three bonus tracks tagged on at the end, and they're all covers. You've got a uh, landfill, which is a pitch shifter track. Um, for those that um, know pitch shifter, for more of their like prodigy days from you know Genius and stuff like that. Yeah, they're actually more of an industrial band at the beginning, and um, yeah, it's a pretty good take on a on a pretty cool song. You got a saturation, sa saturation, which is a sonic violence cover, and a passing complexion, which is a big black cover. And um, to be honest, I don't really know the original versions of that, but they sounded all right on this. So um, yeah, you've got, like I say, one more time, remixed, live drums, which is what everyone wanted, and an extra song that was meant to be on the album is now put in. With a couple of bonus tracks on the end. So think of this as the uh, the director's cut of the... Uh, think of uh, when George Lucas went and added all, all those scenes to Star Wars. Or something like that. You know. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's worth having both. Because you've got the companion piece. A bit like with Nevermore. With the uh, two mixes of uh, the politics of Ecstasy. Is that the album? I'm looking right at it. Where is it? It's not Enemies of Reality, is it? Here we are. Yeah. Remember Enemies of Reality? And then you had uh, everyone panned it for the mix and then Andy Sneak remixed it. Yeah, same sort of thing. Everyone kind of kept the other one, didn't they? Because you can compare the two. Um, I don't mind it, really, when a band revisits an album and kind of corrects... Uh, thing I did, um, and oh, there's one thing as well. I went on, the band put this up as a stream, and people were complaining that it didn't sound any different. And um, I got a stream, I listened to this on earphones like I've got in now, and I had both albums on each window, and I was literally doing 30 seconds by 30 seconds. You can hear the difference. I, I'm one of these people, it bores me when people talk about production and mastering and stuff like that. Um, on particular, Virus of Faith. You can particularly hear it on that. There are some points, uh, at the beginning, when the album kicks off, you do kind of think, oh, this doesn't sound that different. I mean, it's all triggered and processed anyway, but um, digitized, shall we say. 
But um, no, the more you listen to it and the more you go back and forth and back and forth, and I was doing it all over the song, yeah, and um, it does it does sound more organic. It does sound better because even like a like some part was like you know like a machine machine gun. It would be like literally like it's like loads of little really fast tapping while this it's like you know it's it feels human you can tell that's a human playing because he literally could not do drumming that precise as on the thing but have both you know get if you've if you've already got this one get it again as a uh, companion piece and uh, yeah don't bitch about the drum machine because the songs are still good and yeah it's nice and corrected I like the artwork as well the difference in the uh, artwork I think it's pretty cool and you know what I, I fucking love Fear Factory it's got to be said I mean I dive in and out but Fear Factory are one of those bands that um, I've maintained an interest from from the beginning really I, I, I vividly remember the first time I heard a Fear Factory song and I was just blown away it was the first time I'd ever gone into a nightclub a nightclub that played metal and um, I remember going in there that time. I remember lying to the bouncer, you know, sort of sneaked into nightclubs and whatnot at that point. But I'd never been into one that played metal before. And it was like stepping into a different world. I was completely changed that night. And um, and I remember, ha, oh, da 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 you know, and hearing Replica for the first time in this club, surrounded by crazy metalers going mental. Yeah, it was great, and yeah, I've I've always kept up with them. Really, I've always, you know, maybe not been that too bothered. At, you know, they've kind of stopped and started, and there's been gaps, but I've always been curious to what the new album sounds like, and always wanted to check out. You know, I've never been completely put off them, and um, even if I just listen to it just to just to see what it's like, I've I've always been happy with what I heard and. You know, with so many albums coming out, I might, you know, I think Mechanize, I kind of listened to enough just to do a review and moved on pretty quick. But yeah, I think these are two, I think these albums have been sort of put on the shelf for the time being. And um, this is a period of the band that I think's overlooked and I think is now. The time to um, get yourself reacquainted. Revisit these albums because they are very good. I think people tend to just go to the first like three or four albums with Fear Factory, and now the later stuff it weighs up. It it, it matches. Um, it holds up to the classic material, you know. Um, right, and now I'm going to give you my verdict on um, the current Fear Factory. Um, I've got high hopes. I've got to be optimistic. This guy that they've got is very talented and is a very good vocalist. The um, I've watched various video clips. They are playing London in November, and I'm probably I've I've got a lot of stuff to pay for at the moment. But um, if it doesn't sell out, I'm going to try and get a ticket to that. I've, just out of curiosity alone. Uh, yeah, he's young. I think Dino's done a good job by getting an unknown vocalist so this vocalist can now sort of start on a clean slate and grow into the role rather than getting him from them and it's gonna you know like black sabbath getting ian gillen in us an already established singer i think it's a, a, getting a, a lower tier singer that can then step up into the role i think he's done the right thing now because he has got big shoes to fill He's singing the parts very well. He's doing the songs very, very well. And he seems like a good front man as well. For me, the proof in the pudding will be when they do an album. That's where that's gonna when I, when I really make my mind up. Does he get Fear Factory? You know? Um, is he gonna write lyrics that are gonna fit with the lyrical themes already? Um, yeah, like time will tell with that basically because there's so many good vocalists out there and there's so many ways I would have loved when I was in bands and I would have gone on YouTube and learnt the technical ways of 
doing the different things with your voice and I was always, you know, finding it hard to, but my Achilles heel was always switching from, you know, screaming and growling to clean vocals. You, you can do that now. Um, but, uh, yeah, so finding a young singer that can sing as well as Burton C. Bell, I think pretty, it wouldn't be that hard. It'd be like finding a drummer now or a, you can find someone that can fit and play those songs. That's not going to be the problem. So he's doing that and he's performing live really well. But for me, yeah, the proof of the pudding will be when when I hear a new album. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna be optimistic and keep an open mind. I've you know I, I'm one of these people that loves the Blaze Bailey era of Iron Maiden, and and I I say that the Tony Martin era of Black Sabbath is one of the most underrated eras of of rock and metal history. So I'm not a, I'm not against new singers. I think a bit of new blood now and then shakes things up. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm more, I'm more than happy to give this guy a chance and um, you know, wish for the best. But um, there was a downside. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> the, um, what was I saying? Oops, fireworks. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Really, he, he's performing really well, but I'm curious to see what a new album will be like but he is he is he's doing it well live and i'm gonna check him out and um we'll see time will tell so that's my uh, verdict on the new current fear factory here's a point for you though so i mentioned earlier archetype where is it yeah um there's a little theory for you, and I want you to comment what you think of this. So this was when Dino was kicked out of the band. The band actually split and then reformed without him. That was the way they would get around doing it. No one in Fear Factory today is on this album. No one on this album is in Fear Factory today. How funny is that? Um... But there's a, but they are the current incarn, in, incarnation of Fear Factory, are playing a song from this album. Um, is it is it the uh, title track? Yeah. And there is a lyric on there. The infection has been removed. The soul of this machine has improved. And it was always said at the time, kind of insinuated, heavily rumored, that that was a dig at Dino. The infection has been removed. The soul of this machine has improved. Now the bands <laughs> are playing that album, that playing that song, and I'm wondering: is that Dino doing the same thing back to Burton? Like, yeah, you've you wrote that song, having a dig at me. Well, now I'm playing that song, digging back at you. When I was outside the band and you were the only original member, well, now I'm the only original member and I'm throwing it back at you. Is that a, is just that the way I just think? I don't know. Do you think that's a little, a little back at you? But I do think it's funny that, yeah, that hats off to Dino for playing a song on an album he wasn't in, though. He doesn't have to play it, does he? No one's expecting him to. But it is a good song. Um, but yeah, no one in the band is, no one on that album is now in the band. It's weird. But um, yeah, I'm optimistic though. I'm forever the opti optimist when it comes to bands. I'm, I'm happy. I'm looking forward to seeing what um, they come up with. But yeah, I've really enjoyed. I've I've really enjoyed. I've got a real new appreciation for this album. Actually, this has really reinvigorated my interest, and I really enjoyed listening to both of these albums today. And it's made me want to dig into the thing. And yeah, and it's kind of occurred to me. I've realised, like, yeah, I've I've always loved this band, and I've always kept an interest and kept in touch with them. So, yeah, I think a uh, a retrospective video on Fear Factory is uh, is called for. So yeah, before the end of the year, I'm going to be doing a Fear Factory retrospective. So um, hopefully, that's something you're going to look forward to. And uh, something you want to see. And yeah, give me a comment. Let me know what you think. What do you think of these new albums? What do you think is an underrated Fear Factory album? What is your favourite Fear Factory album? What do you think of the new singer? 
Are you curious to see what Burton C. Bell's going to come up with? Um, he's bound to do a new album with a new band eventually, surely. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.